Maniacs, welcome back to the channel. Your local bedhead here. We are going to be diving into another Nukes Top 5 video. And first off and foremost, I should probably go ahead and say Happy 4th of July, everybody. This is probably the only video I'm going to be able to post. Um, I actually have to get ready for work right after this video and get the heck out of this house and go sit at work. For the, I, I'm literally a bedhead right now. I'm literally a bedhead because I just woke up. I look horrible in the morning, man. I look horrible. Anyways, we're, we're not going to waste any time, guys. We're going to go ahead and dive right into this thing. I think this is for a video called uh, 10 Scary Videos That Are Nightmare Fuel. So I'm expecting some nightmare fuel shit. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do this. And uh, if you like this type of content, again, get this video to uh, about 100 likes. And I'll continue to do Nukes Top 5 reactions for you guys and your entertainment. So make sure you hit that like button. Here we go with Nukes Top 5. This next Nukes Top 5 exclusive video was sent in by viewer Michael Youngblood. The video was shot near Winchester, Virginia, a city that was the site of some of the bloodiest battles of the U.S. Civil War. Michael is filming his friend Jake when they capture something that they just did not expect. Let me get you from the front. Okay. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. You recording? Yep. Oh! Okay, well, that actually, actually, it's more than likely this one I can see being fake 100%, um, mainly because of the setup. These guys look kind of like they could be about 16, 15 years old, maybe. Now my socks are like wet because of the ground. You look at that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did you see it? When looking back at the video, Michael and Jake are shocked to see what looks like a mysterious figure dressed like a Civil War yeah. soldier. And he's also holding, uh, supposedly, like a rifle over his shoulders, too. You can see the reflection of the metal and stuff. That's creepy. <laughs> like, genuinely, that's a creepy video. If I ever caught that in the, in the background of my video, I'd be like, what the... I'm, literally, it could be one of the guys, like, it could be someone they're related to, it could be a ghost, but it also could be, I'm not sure if they have them out there, some Civil War reenactment actor, just walking in the background, and maybe they just didn't notice him, but that's the thing, you'd think they would notice him, that might be the thing that's kind of shocking, unless, again, it was somebody they knew just kind of doing it, and they just didn't say anything, they could literally go either way, I mean, this could be 100% fake, but I will say right now, that is cool. I, I gotta say, I'm actually, I genuinely like that one. So that was, okay, okay, it was a fun one to start out with, but I, it literally, it more than likely is fake, because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and carrying a long, old-timey musket. Yep. The creepy apparition silently walks across the field right behind them, but Michael and Jake say that they didn't see anyone at the time. So could this be the spirit? And he was still going, like he was still walking. Of a fallen Civil War soldier? Let me know what you think. Shadows of Doubt. It's a normal Friday afternoon in Opelousas, Louisiana, and Dante Saunier stops at a service station to get some gas. Suddenly, he notices something very strange inside a parked and empty school bus across the street. Little bus. About to go walk up to this bus. Look at that, look at the children playing. Look, look at that. Okay, so, okay, so he's actually going over there. He's gonna investigate. Um. An empty bus. Empty bus. Strange, creepy shadows of children can be seen walking through the school bus, even though the vehicle is parked and completely empty. Dante says that he walked over to the bus and even drove his truck around it, but saw no one and nothing to explain the bizarre apparitions. Dante was creeped out by the entire experience and posted his video to Facebook, where it quickly got over 2 million views. As of today, the mystery of the school bus shadows remains unexplained. Well, I can certainly see, like, it's, it's weird. It's weird, because they actually look like a bunch of kids, because there has to be a reason why the school bus is there, right? That's the first thing, and I don't know what this building is, but it could be a field trip, and it could have been... 
the students walking off of the bus, because I, I noticed a couple shadows of actual physical looking people walking towards the exit of the bus, and that could have been just their shadows reflecting off of the seats. It could have been. I'm not saying that's exactly a fact. You know, I try to try to add some logic into everything I, I try to watch, but uh, another one that's kind of creepy for sure, it, it, it's, it's definitely interesting. It could be literally the angle and the lighting, and that's why it looks the way it looks. Um, I, he, again, he said that he went over there and he recorded, but I don't know that for a fact. I mean, for me, the things I look for are the slight things, like how immediately when he decided to get off his, out of his vehicle and start walking over there, he faced his phone towards the ground. And I'm not sure if he was doing that because he genuinely didn't want to be seen by somebody he might have been aware was at the bus and didn't want to come off creepy because unfortunately... That's what would happen if you are walking over to a school bus full of kids or have kids around it and you're recording them. They are going to take that into extreme accountability and probably call the cops on you. So there has to be a reason why this bus is parked here, I would guess. And the, the, it, it's interesting because, again, you don't see nobody physically in there. You do see one person, though, towards the end. I will say I'm going to go back a little bit. And this is probably not going to be cut because, again, I'm going to have to, like, go to work right after so I won't have time. But like vehicle is parked and com see you can see a physical person right in here. He just walked over there. You can see a, a physical arm right there. Completely empty. See the kids still going. And he says that he walked over to the bus and even drove his truck around it, but saw no one and nothing to explain the bizarre. The bus. I have a theory. One sec. Wait. Sorry. I'm trying to see if I can see anybody's heads on the other side of the bus because, again, we don't know what's on the other side of the bus. So there could be literally a bunch of kids on the other side of the bus and underneath this thing. And we wouldn't see them unless the guy went fully around. And, again, that's kind of suspicious that he uh, said he went around the bus and there was nobody there. It's suspicious because, for all we know, there could have been kids on the other side of the bus, but we never see him do it. So that's a bit weird. Unless we do, and I just haven't seen the video yet. And then you can see someone physically moving right there where the driver's seat is, which is kind of weird. So I don't know, man. Uh, well, no, it might have been a shadow because there's a lot of shadowing. Strange, creepy shadows of children can be seen walking through the... It looked like someone walked off the bus right there. I think this what this is, is there's a bunch of kids on the other side of the bus and their shadows are being reflected onto the seats. Um, that's my guess. And on one side of the bus, it would look like a bunch of shadows moving along in inside the bus. But, and look, there is still a couple of people in there. It's tough, man. I don't know. That's tough. It's a weird one. It's a weird one for sure. Kind of like the first one. The first one, though, could have been definitely an actor just walking in the background with a, you know, musket and everything. This one is like, I, I can't really tell you. I would personally assume it's the sun probably reflecting the shadows of the kids on the other side of the bus, inside the bus, is what I would guess. And maybe the arms and stuff are actually from the windows on the other side of the bus. That's my best guess. But I guess it's still left up to interpretation of what it could be. The guy does not really give you a whole lot, and I think you should find that suspicious, is that he does not show in this video him walking on the other side of the bus. No. Yeah. School bus, even though Weird. the vehicle is parked and completely empty. Dante says that he walked over to the bus and even drove his truck around it, but Weird. saw no one and nothing to explain the bizarre apparitions. Dante was creeped out by the entire experience and posted his video to Facebook, where it quickly got over 2 million views. As of today, the mystery of the school bus shadows remains unexplained. The Midnight Whisper. Red Ezer Mike is up around mid- I did see a kid sit standing in there. I think it is what I said it was. The kids are on the other side of the bus, and the sun is reflecting them, and they're in a line, so that's why it looks like it's the same shadow over and over again. I, that's my guess. At night I'm after done. his family have all went to bed, he suddenly smells a strange odor coming from the living room, and he suspects that one of the family pets might have urinated on the floor. But as Mike begins searching for the telltale puddle, something scares the absolute out of him. A 
small childlike voice seems to whisper, Mike, from somewhere nearby. Mike just books it up the stairs, leaving his dog and his concerned little kitten in the background to wonder what the hell just happened. Now, Mike says that he lives in an old 1850s house near the coast of Herring Cove, Canada. It has a slight bit of dark history, but he says that he's never experienced anything remotely paranormal before this night. In fact, Mike has never even made a single post about anything supernatural until this strange incident that literally sent him running. The thing in the tunnel. With that one, it's tough to tell. It's tough to tell. Because in the whole situation there, you could have said, okay, I'm assuming the guy's name is Mike. Basically, the dog and cat only freak out when they, when they hear the guy running up the stairs. So they kind of initially probably suspected something was wrong when he started running up the stairs, and that was their reaction. And again, for the word Mike to be said, you could, yeah, put that together very easily. Um, so it's tough. It's tough to tell. I would love to see more experiments done in that house. If that happens and they do catch more and stuff that is actually a little bit harder to explain, then I'd be like, okay, we got something here. But if it's only like a one-time thing, and I have noticed it's a reoccurring theme with a lot of this stuff is that a lot of people who don't catch paranormal activity and never even bother with it are the ones who come out with stuff that is revolved around the paranormal. I've noticed that. Or they'll use that as an excuse. Like, this never happens. Like, I've never experienced anything like that. Okay. Then why all of a sudden do you find an interest on posting paranormal content to social media, right? So that's what I find a little suspicious is like it's not like you're going out there all the time looking for this stuff and then you finally catch something that's really cool. No, it's just that one time where you're like, you had, of course, a camera facing off in that direction or a security camera or whatever have you, and that's the time something weird happens, and then you post it all over social media. And it's almost like a little bit of an experiment, like to see how far it could go, right? Because, I mean, let's be real, paranormal content, no matter what it is, can do very well on, like, new... Uh, like Well, for one, you could send it to Nukes Top 5, and that would do you very well. But like TikTok, uh, YouTube Shorts, things like that, you can do really well. Nuke's Top 5 viewer Sophie reached out to us about a very creepy video that her friend Laura recorded in an abandoned railway tunnel in Hassel, Germany. The tunnel was built in 1890 and it was used extensively by German troops during World War II. So, while on a weekend trip, Laura checks out the historic old abandoned rail tunnel. She's recording with her phone when she captures what is maybe one of the weirdest clips I've ever seen. Oh. Check it out. Okay. It's got to be it's got to be pretty interesting for nukes to say that. Something pale and thin can be seen rising up from the tracks in front of Laura. What looks like a thin little arm. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly does look like a thin little arm. But it's almost too difficult to make out what this is. It really does. It really is. It's tough to make out. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking it could be just an animal. I don't know. Uh, it's weird looking. It's really weird looking. I mean, it could be an animal with something attached to it and stuck to it, and maybe it you know, saw a person, so it started raising its tail or whatever have you. I mean, I'm just coming up with theories on what it could have been, and of course, it don't matter how late in the day it is. If you're in there by yourself and something moves like that, you're going to bolt it. I don't care who you are. I would bolt it. I'd be like, okay, what the fuck is that? And I'd be gone. But uh, it's tough. As for Laura, she gets one look at the disturbing thing and just turns and makes a run for it. Mm. Now, watching this clip over and over, I honestly have no idea what this is. It looks like maybe uh, a torso. 
torso with two skinny arms uh, getting up in a very unnatural way. Well, it looks like you can actually see something turn its face a little bit. Like, look at that. Right in here underneath what, what supposedly would be the armpit. Look at... Unna you can see something kind of pop in a little bit. I don't know. That's weird. The only way we would have definitely known of what it was was if she actually had walked up to it. Of course, in these situations, if you're by yourself, you're not going to do that. You're going to bolt it, and I don't blame her. I really wish this would have been a moment where they had a couple friends there. Maybe one of them tried to walk by it or whatever have you. This is, I, it's almost too difficult to tell. If I had to be real, I would say it was an animal of some kind. And animals can look very crazy in pixelated form. I mean, it, it could have been just an animal. That, that, that literally could have been it. But at the same time, I'm like, it's interesting. Kind of like that for like that second video. Or the school bus. It's like, I really feel like if there was more, like, we attempted to go forward and see what it really was, we would have probably have known what it was. But unfortunately, it just never got to that point. It's a shame, because I would actually, I'm now curious. I'm like, that is interesting. I'm trying to fi figure out if it's, like, CGI or anything, or, like, digital effects. But honestly, it looked like it was, it was really there. So, I'm gonna be real. I think it was really there. But, yeah, it's tough. Natural way. Maybe it's an animal. Maybe it's a... Uh very weird looking person i just don't know so you tell me what you think this is down in the comments looks too small to be kind of we like a scary bit it looks too small to be kind of like a normal person uh it could be just a a mangled up animal or maybe an animal that's just trying to like sleep maybe it got hurt i, I don't know it's tough videos so if you've seen one or even filmed one yourself contact me at nukes top five at gmail.com evil alexa now, Evil this next video is about the dangers of accidentally scaring yourself. Eight-year-old Jackson and two of his friends are having a sleepover at his home in Grapevine, Texas. The three fearless young boys decide to ask the family's Amazon Alexa to tell them a scary bedtime story. It was then that they realized they had made a huge mistake. I don't know that. Alexa. Alexa, Alexa tell me a bedtime story. Sorry, I don't know that. Oh, Alexa, Alexa tell me a horror story. Oh, God. Alexa, turn off. Alexa, turn off. Alexa, is that creepy? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. Alexa, play. It's like a song. Oh my god. As requested, Alexa begins telling a scary story starting with, Did you hear that? The eight-year-old boys lose their damn minds and just begin yeah, they to scream do. and yell for Alexa to stop. Oh my God! You reap what you sow. mother comes to the rescue, but she seems pretty unimpressed by their reaction. Well, yeah, they're scaring themselves. You know those like typical situations. I told you about them horror movies, them damn horror movies. No more, no more. Start tripping off their poster, like they're like, you know, monster movie posters off the walls and stuff. I'm going to be putting these away until you're old enough to finally start watching these. Uh, you're watching too many of them and you're getting, too, you're getting yourself too scared. What's your problem? Nothing scary at all. I think the lesson here is always be careful about letting your kids watch or listen to scary con content. Oh, I mean, boy. Uh, enjoy the video is what I was going to say there thank you unholy, unholy night. night mariana ramos says that her father was attending christmas mass at his local church when he some kids can't handle it uh me myself i was watching friday the 13th part three at the age of four so decided to send her a quick video of the service when mariana watches the video 
she sees something that gives her the chills. A pale person with no distinct features and deep hollow eyes can be seen amongst the celebrating church go. Or, hear me out, it's an elderly person with shades on. And maybe there's a little bit of light reflecting off of them. Possibly. I'm just going to assume. Of course, Mariana asks her father about the mysterious figure, and he too is disturbed and confused because he says he didn't see this person when he recorded the video. He asks other church members, but no one recognizes the odd stranger in the footage. But here's where things get really weird. Okay. Because Mariana claims that there was one person who did recognize this figure. Oh, and it's, let me guess, it's somebody who's passed away. Are, depending on, like, if they actually pulled up a photo of this person and then showed us that photo and it did look like the per then I'd be like, oh my god, that is fucking weird. Church's old priest. The priest said that the person in the video was an old woman who used to work closely with the church. A woman who had died many years earlier. So, is this the woman's ghost showing up to church for Christmas mass? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? You decide. If I had to be honest, these kind of situations happen all the time. Uh, and look, out of all of them, they're certainly a standout. At first I thought they were naked, but then I realized they actually had something on. It's always the people that look like the standout. And of course, if they're elderly, then it's like, oh, actually, you know what's interesting? That person, believe it or not, used to be an old, uh, and, then, and then, yeah, they make a big deal about it. And it's actually probably just someone they know. And then they probably just rolled with it. If I had to guess, I mean, it, literally, these things happen all the time with the paranormal. It's almost to the point now where it's just like, roll your eyes, kind of. Like, I'm all for like old, scary stories, you know, like creepy stuff. But this is probably a legitimate person who maybe may be still alive. I don't know. And they probably never saw this video posted on social media. It's normally the elderly that never get to see a lot of elderly that never get to see like this kind of stuff posted on social media. For all you know, for all she knows that she's probably still going to church, not even aware of it. Yeah, it's pretty it can be pretty fucked up. Like unless they actually have photo proof of this person being passed away from years ago going to church and actually having documents and stuff, I, I'm not going to believe something like that automatically. Uh, it is interesting, but I do believe that this might be somebody, obviously, I think, because I actually started seeing a little bit of their, their eye underneath the, uh, the eye, you know, where the eyelid is, and I started noticing that, and I'm like, okay, so these might be just darker glasses, because if you look closely, I can almost kind of see the line right here between the, the frame or, like, the uh, lenses to where it tells me that this person has, like, darker glasses on, like, tinted glasses, and yeah, I don't I don't believe that this person passed away. I don't believe that this person is a ghost. I do genuinely think that they are there. And even to the point where like he said he didn't notice them, but his camera kept going back over in that direction. So something kind of tells me they probably did see the person. And then when someone asked them, you know, who is this? They probably just made up some crazy story. I didn't even see that person there. I, I just don't believe it. I, I just can't believe it. Unless I have actual documented proof of this person passing away. And it was before this video was filmed. I'm not just gonna buy it window to the other side. TikTok user Alyssa is outside with her two children one night when the family spots something strange in the second floor bedroom window. All right, my daughter's room is up there and we keep seeing something. All right, put your flashlight up. <gasps> okay, wait, we're gonna look down for a minute, but put your flashlight down. Let's see if we can get it to go again. All right, flash it up there. Oh, now it's gone. Put your flashlight down. What? Flash it again. <laughs> Put it down. Put your flashlight down. Let's see if it'll do it again. She's... All right, put it up. Hurry. Oh. Someone or something can be seen peeking through the blinds of Alyssa's daughter's bedroom. But when they shine their flashlight, whatever it is simply disappears out of sight. Creepily enough, no one can be seen standing behind the blinds and no hand can be seen moving them. Now, Alyssa believes that her house is haunted by a friendly ghost or poltergeist that means her family no harm. 
So instead. The mom's not really doing a good job, though, at like, because obviously the kids are a little bit spooked about it, and she's laughing. I don't know. I don't know. It's almost the reaction. Look, some people are actually okay with living in haunted locations, and maybe this is just one of those rare examples of like people actually being okay with it and not making a big deal about it, especially if it's not harmful. But the way she's giggling and laughing about it, kind of making it sound like, you know, how, how you would if you were trying to tell your kids about a hidden egg on Easter, right? Like, oh, oh, there might be something there. There might be something there. And then you're like, why don't you face your flashlight at it again? And I don't know. It just feels a little off with me. Like she's aware of something going on in the house when they're all outside. I don't know. It just kind of comes off that way. I'm not saying they're lying. I'm not saying it's bullshit. I'm not saying it's anything like that. Because you got to believe. You got to trust me, too. I'm a believer in the paranormal. I've had my own experiences. So this might be something that could be real. But at the same time, uh, there could be someone in the house with a string attached to the blinds, pulling on it, pulling it down, and then, like, letting it go, and it goes right back up. I mean, that is, it literally is that simple as that. So, if I had to guess, I would say it's probably a setup. In my personal opinion, I could be wrong about that. I'm not saying that's 100%, but I do think that that kind of stunt is not hard to pull off. I could probably pull it off myself. Could just give me a couple, like a little slim, like piece of string at a far enough distance where you probably won't see the string at all. And like he said, you can't see no one behind the curtains. So all it would take is someone to kind of look for the flashlight light to come through the window and then leave. And that's when they would do it again. So it's almost like she has a rule set. Like, hey, if every time the kids flash the flashlight, you know, let it go. But every time they put the flash away, pull it back down. And it's as easy as that. So, and they, yeah, they make it easy that way. Instead of being alarmed, Alyssa and her children just rush right into the house and quickly head up to check out the window. All right, let's see if it'll do it one more time, baby. Well, he actually did go inside. I didn't even realize that. The kid actually went inside the house. Okay, so he's not as spooked as I thought. Put your flashlight up. All right, f it. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. Ah. Uh. All right, here's the upstairs. I just want to show you guys. No one behind the door. Here's my daughter's room. It's a little messy, I'm sorry, but just to show you, here's the closet. I just want to show you there's nobody behind. Yeah, you're not doing a good job nobody of showing. In the closet. Here's I the can't, window. you're not letting me see anything. You're just like really fast running by. Right over here. Nobody. Not a single person up here. The family fun. <coughs> She's not really doing a good job, though, at letting you have an idea of where anybody could be hiding. Um, I looked up there, and there could be like 16, 15 different places you could probably sneak and hide in that place. Under the bed, I didn't even get a good chance to look under the bed. I mean, I, to me, it looks like a setup, honestly, because of how fast she was doing it. Even when the kid went upstairs, she kind of just bolted into the house right it's after. Nothing and no one there. Now, it is interesting to note that shortly after posting this video to TikTok, Alyssa closed her account and seemed to just kind of disappear from the internet. Mm. So, that is a bit of a mystery. Because I'm wondering how many people were messaging saying how it could have been done or posting comments on these videos saying, hey, it's kind of weird that you'd, you, know, you ran inside the house and didn't even let us get a chance to look around or it looks obviously fake and people were probably calling her out for being fake and stuff. And it, more than likely, if she really was faking, she probably did not want this to be her first video. She did not want all of that kind of negative attention. So she probably just went ahead and just removed it. Um, if it was real, she probably would have stuck it out. But unfortunately, like there's too many, there's too many things in this video that could be easily just manipulated. So if that was my guess, that would be my guess. She probably got a whole bunch of messages saying you're faking it. You're not, you know, this is it's not real. And it kind of makes you wonder if that ghost was friendly after all. Uh, I, not every time someone removes their account, that means it's automatically paranormal related. Sometimes things are just too easily fake too easily and this one is a good example of like this would have been an easy one to fake walking among us canadian paranormal investigation team walking among us reached out to us about nice a terrifying beard. experience one of their investigators had at the historic sdg jail in cornwall ontario canada the sdg jail was built in 1833 and over its 190 year history many people have lost their life here some by hanging some from illness, and some from horrible violence. Perhaps even more disturbing, many unclaimed bodies were buried right on the property. 
With a dark history like that, it's no wonder that the SDG jail is said to be extremely haunted. On an overnight investigation, walking among us team member Krista is all alone in a known paranormal hotspot on the lower levels of the jail. She has a chilling experience that the investigators just can't explain. My name's Krista. Can you please tell me your name? Sound like the voice said, yeah, that's me. That's not funny. Krista is freaked out when she hears- But it's the same exact voice. It's the same exact voice. So unless, like, it's the literally same exact voice. Shuffling footsteps in the hallway near her. And then hears a voice that she thinks is fellow investigator Rafe. But there's just one problem. At the time, Rafe is in a completely different part of the building, filming with the other team investigators. I'm going to do the port. Nothing ever happens to me. I'm fine. Yeah, but it. maybe it will. Okay, fine. I'll sit, sit there. Sit for like 20 seconds. Okay, See if fine, you hear fine. anything. I'm the same way, so I tend to just be behind the camera. Which is more fun. It is. It is. Krista is all alone while team members Rafe, Kelly, and James are doing a separate investigation in another part of the jail. In fact, when Krista calls out, the other team member's camera captures them in real time running over to check on Krista. Is anyone coming around the corner? Yeah, okay. What? Yeah, it's me. Rafe? No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Hey, hello, hey, hello, hey, hello. We're coming. Rafe? It is it is the same voice, but for some reason it did sound a lot closer. Cause it did sound like his voice. Hmm. But no one's there. Don't play with me right now. No, we're not all the way here. Yeah, we're all the way to the fucking. So we were in the room doing the ball thing. He went out there. I'm going to the kitchen. I don't know the way they're kind of going about it is already kind of suspicious you know what I mean like they're like all kind of freaking out talking really fast saying no no I was, I was actually over there like it was, and it's just like you're not like you don't even know truly what's truly happened like she's saying that she heard a voice but they're automatically like just losing it, you know. Like, oh no 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 no! It's just it's just off. It's just a little off to me on how they're responding. Like there was no like you know what'd you hear? What it say? Do you know what it said? And there's no conversation like that. It's just everybody's kind of like talking fast, talking over each other, and just trying to explain themselves. So that kind of is weird to me. After rewatching the footage, the investigators believe that a spirit might have mimicked Rafe's voice. You can watch this entire investigation at the SDG jail. My thing is, how did they not hear it? They were not that far away. They were not that far away. I've noticed when they were doing that walk around, they were not that far. They couldn't hear it. The camera picked it up. She heard it clearly. I heard it clearly. How did they not hear it clearly? But then all of a sudden, now they're all freaking out. It doesn't really add up to me. And is a little suspicious. That's not her fault. I don't know what could have been done there. But it is, like, their reactions to me almost kind of maybe didn't buy it. Over on the YouTube Personally. channel, Walking Among Us. Who waits in the woods? So this is Noah. Noah is not a YouTuber. He's not a TikToker. In fact, he's not a quote, influencer of any kind. 
Noah is just a guy who posted one single video to the internet about something that happened to him that scared the living shit out of him. You see, Noah was driving late one night in the deep isolated woods of Sun River, Oregon. He was getting a bit sleepy, so he decided to pull off onto a desolate country road in the woods to take a nap in the back of his truck. As you can probably guess, it did not no. go well. So I was originally not gonna make this video, but a few days ago I was camping in Sun River and what I thought would be a good location to pull over the side of the road in like this forest area and sleep, which I thought no one was really around. I'm currently sleeping in the back of my truck right now. I don't even know what time it is. And there's someone walking around my truck right now. If you can hear that, it's pretty loud. Um, he's been walking around for like 20 minutes already. Um, my c**t's in my cab though. Um, I don't really know what to do. I'm a little freaked out right now. And mm. it's like pitch black outside. Probably like 2 in the morning. And he just keeps walking around. And He's like really close to my truck. I've never been this scared. And like, this doesn't make any sense because I parked somewhere where you couldn't see no one was on that road. Well, it does make sense. Uh, campers, drug addicts. I mean, it, it, the list goes on. Homeless people can be living out in those woods. You know, like they could have literally a cave around and would be sleeping in that cave because there's nowhere else to go. And they noticed your vehicle probably earlier pull off to the side of the road and now they're actually at your location. I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen here, and more than likely, or it could be an animal. But it does sound like someone. It actually does sound like a person. He's literally, he's literally walking. He's literally walking on my truck. Mm -hmm. The canopy, the back door is locked. I can never be scared from wherever. I don't think he knows there. I'm so scared right now. I got a gun. <laughs> He's literally peeking through the door right now. I've never been this scared ever. I'll tell you right now, not saying anything might be more dangerous than actually saying something. Because normally, nobody's going to do something if they know that someone's in there. More than likely. Uh, that's not, not always the case, but more than likely. And unfortunately, since you're not saying nothing, that might actually cause the person to want to break into your vehicle. And at that point, once he sees that you're in there, he's already committed a crime. So it could really turn into an ugly situation at that point. But saying something now would probably actually be beneficial, saying, hey, there's somebody in here, and maybe I got a gun, right? Like, add something in there that might scare him. But you're not saying anything, and that might make him want to break in. So, so the current time is 2.30 in the morning right now. It's still He ran. Eventually, whoever this person was wandered off and left Noah in peace. But the next morning, when Noah cautiously gets out of his truck, there's some creepy evidence left behind. So I'm back home. This is the day after. Um, I've seen this video. I, this was in another Nukes Top 5. I'm almost confident this was in another Nukes Top 5. I remember this video. Yeah, the hand marks all over the windows and stuff. He was trying to look in. That's probably why he couldn't see the light at first when he was looking at the time. He was trying to peek in my truck uh, quite a bit with all these marks. I didn't even notice until I got home. Um, not really. Handprints. Not really scary. I will say, uh, probably didn't like he. More than likely, situations like this, the guy might have been just some guy trying to make sure he was either there was somebody in there and we're okay, and maybe just a broken down vehicle. He could have been just looking to see what was inside it, maybe to rob it. Who knows? Um, doesn't mean it was always like a negative thing. Obviously, the guy was scared, spooked out enough to want to just get out of there. Like, he just did not want to risk it. Uh, I mean, for all he knew, the guy inside the truck had a gun, and then he would have been dead. So, I mean, more than likely, yeah, just some guy hoping that nobody was in it so he could probably rob the thing. Take whatever he needed. Probably a drug addict of some sort. I'm not, not saying that's exactly what it was, but they were like, oh, okay, I can't steal out of this because there's someone in it. Yeah. There, a lot of scratches, stuff like that. 
um, uh, dragging his finger on my side of my truck. Uh, well, it looks like to be trying to get inside my truck. Um, that's really all I could tell from when he was walking around. That's new. Uh, don't know how that got there. More handprints trying to get in my truck. Um, at least the back canopy was locked, but um, yeah, that was the result. So, could have been. That was probably the scariest camping experience I've probably ever had in my entire life. Um, <clears throat> now the street. Yeah, I don't even know if I want to go camping in today's society anymore because, dude, there's so many situations where people are trying to actually hurt you or get into your like tent or just so much. You don't. You can't trust anything out in the woods. Almost. You know what I mean? Just thing about this entire incident is that Noah was parked off the road in the woods in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night and whoever this person was outside had no flashlight and never spoke a single word while skulking around Noah's truck all night long. So just who was this and what did he want? Maybe Noah is lucky that he never found out. Hider in the house. It's possible. Mamo and Patty, a couple who explore haunted places in Mexico, are worried that a vengeful female spirit followed them home from one of their investigations. The couple says that they now experience frequent paranormal activity in their home that terrifies both them and their children. A few months ago, we featured Memo and Patty's story as they began broadcasting their experiences live on YouTube in an attempt to prove that their paranormal encounters are real. <laughs> One night, they were woken up by weird sounds coming from outside their bedroom door. When this happened, we've seen this. We've seen these guys before, and I genuinely think that more than likely, this is not real. I've I remember actually remember I remember watching these, and this is another kind of thing that you see a lot of when it comes to paranormal content. All of a sudden, a random couple will start video vlogging everything that's happening inside their supposed paranormal haunted house. And all this stuff is like next level, very easy to fake, doors opening and shutting, uh, some even adding some crazy, stupid CGI. Yeah, they, hell, even some families probably intentionally scare their own kids for the sake of the video's realism and like the intensity. So, yeah, I mean, it's all for the sake of money. You can make mun bank off of these kind of things. So it happens a lot. Te despojo. Lárgate. Yep. La ventana. ¿En esa? Sí, no puede. Es imposible que haya alguien ahí parado. Y les voy a demostrar por qué. No, miren, ahí está la ventana, ¿sale? Since that night, the terrifying activity inside Memo and Patty's home has only intensified, and the couple continues to live stream their experiences right on YouTube. Another night, and the family is already live streaming as they arrive home. They are answering some questions from their curious live viewers when something happens that is truly bizarre. Por ahí las llaves se quedaron pegadas. Por ahí se quedaron pegadas. Saludos, quiero TikToks. Vamos a darle con uh -huh. Tokio. Vamos a darle muy bien esta noche a la... Yeah, what a coincidence. He's facing the camera at the doorway where the thing is caught. You see, you look for those coincidences. Sometimes... There might not be any coincidence, but sometimes you know it's too obvious. Like he had to raise his phone up just high enough to catch whatever was going to be in there. And then he turns and acts like he didn't see anything. It happens a lot. It's That's one of the things that's just gotten so overly used to where they'll like, okay, we got to make sure we, you know, get the phone in that right position. And then he's like, he probably could see what he's looking at on his phone. And then he aims it towards that. And he keeps acting like, you know, we can't see his face or anything. He keeps acting like he doesn't see it. It's it's too it's a common occurrence in all of these kind of things. I just don't buy that. Did you see it? 
Oh yeah, I thought As the family is getting out of the car, Memo randomly pans his phone's camera past the house's window for just a second. But in that brief moment, a bizarre dark silhouette can be seen standing in their living room. And whoever has that there or whoever could be underneath that, I mean, there are like, there's furniture in both, like there's two bits of furniture there someone could be easily hiding under or like the second they look back, that person, all they have to do is turn around, jump over the uh, couch and hide behind the couch. It's so dark in there, you would never see that person behind that. Even though the house should be completely empty. Memo and his family have no idea. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, this is them entering their house. Yeah, they could be hiding behind this. They could be hiding behind this. They could be in that dark corner. And if they're hunched down, you'll never see them because they're so darkened. And that corner is so dark, it'd be almost impossible to see them. Completely empty. Memo and his family have no idea what they just caught on camera until viewers watching their live stream start to alert them. Now, Memo tries to debunk the strange apparition, hoping that it was nothing more than a reflection, but he can find no explanation. For Obviously, it's not a reflection. The damn thing, you can see it standing behind this white post. It's not a reflection. It's not even close. You, anybody looking at it would know that. Or who or what this could be. And things only get worse from here. Another night, and Memo starts to broadcast a live stream to YouTube to show the weird prints that he found on his car that was parked in their garage all day. Suddenly, he hears loud banging coming from a storage room inside the house. He hurries inside, and what happens next is truly disturbing. Can I stay? Hola. ¿Quién está ahí? Hola. Oh, no, creo sí. que se metió. Ey, 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 ey. Creo que se metió un animal. Hola. Oh, yeah, and you saw the head over up there? Yeah. No, no, no. The children's playhouse suddenly moves by itself and just slides right across the floor. Memo fears that an animal has gotten... Looks like there the might playhouse. be a shit stain in there. Looks like a shit stain. I don't want to just, you know, randomly point out that kind of stuff, but that's what it kind of looked like. He frantically checks inside and out. There's nothing there. But, again, did you see it? Something that looks like a very tall figure with a shadowy face can be seen peeking out at Memo from behind a shelf. Again, Memo doesn't see it and is completely unaware of what just happened. Yeah, because that's why he faces it off in that direction immediately, right? Look, when he first walks into the room, I'm... <laughs> it looks like a very tall figure. With he makes sure that the camera is looking off in that direction. So whoever is back there, could be a kid, could be whatever, has that thing on a stick and probably lifting it up and then pulls it back down. And it, you get, someone could fit behind that easily. A shadowy face can be seen peeking out at Memo from behind a shelf. Again, Memo doesn't see it and is completely unaware of what just happened until his live stream audience points it out, telling him to go look behind that shelf but that's what they're hoping for they're hoping you point that shit out they they want it to be where they you comment and you have to respond to it and you have to be the ones for some reason yeah they never notice it when they upload they never notice that like you could not have noticed that the first time you watched it i would have seen that right away he even aimed the camera up in that direction and then you're the ones who have to point it out to him bullshit bullshit he knew it was there obviously aquí como creen si aquí no hay nada Está hasta la caja. Vean, es ropa vacía. So just who or what is this? Could it be the spirit that Memo and Patty claim haunt their home? 
Or is this something? It didn't even look like it had eyes. It looked like a mannequin head with like a sheet over it. Something entirely different. It's up to you. You decide. Thanks so much uh, for watching. Okay, so there was a couple of neat ones, and there's some that would like genuinely creep you out, uh, and and certainly were enjoyable. But yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing crazy there. Nothing that really made me think that any of that was really paranormal. Uh, there was some, again, some interesting ones that I might have actually believed, like the school bus one. I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting, but I do think I was right about my theory. And maybe you guys have more theories that I'm just not seeing. So please let, leave those comments in the comment section down below. Go support the original video, of course. We always want to do that. And uh, guys, until next time, please do take care. Have a happy 4th of July. And please go into more detail about what you think about these certain clips. And until next time, please do take care. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Turn me if you caught a chance, three cards.